United Front Games are sending players to Hong Kong in a new open world experience. Do the notorious try and control streets of Hong Kong make it worthwhile or have the dolls already fallen asleep? Find out in this review. <laughs> My man Wei! You done good! You restored order to the night market. Well, you took a chance on me, Winston. I wanted to make sure it paid off. You got the right attitude. It's gonna pay off for you. You'll see. You know anything about the minibus racket? Well, same as everyone. If you want to drive a good route, you pay the toll. That's right. You know the pickup on Marble Drive? The most profitable route in the whole fucking city. From now on, it's yours. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate it, Winston. <laughs> Dog eyes, well. Right now it's his route. But you know how to deal with it, huh? It'll be my fucking pleasure. And I gotta take this. Take a few of the guys with you to back you up. Jesus fucking sick. Let's go. The game story begins with Wei Shen. Wei is a Chinese American cop who has been sent back to where he grew up to help police with an undercover investigation. Wei has been told to infiltrate a notorious Hong Kong triad gang and once in, Wei is told to do what he can to take down the ringleaders of the rival gangs to try and stop gang warfare in Hong Kong. As you progress through the story, Wei will work his way up the ranks, causing many issues with rival gangs that lands him in much more trouble than he was expected. The story is very emotional and really does make you feel a part of Wei's world and life, as there are many twists and turns in the plot which spiral down into a much darker time in the story. Wei frequently wakes up at night, many times due to nightmares about his past. After intensely playing the story, I really felt involved with all the characters, which is rare with games that are set in an impersonal open world environment. The story of course isn't as unique as some may have thought, but that isn't such a bad thing as the story is presented with fantastic dialogue, characters and action. The story picks up after the first hour or so, indulging you into the Hong Kong setting. Hong Kong has been presented very well on the Xbox 360 and PS3, whilst the PC version looks far superior to its console counterparts. This said, the Xbox 360 and PS3 versions both look stunning and have some really beautiful visuals, with the nightlife and rain being some of the best visuals I have seen on the Xbox 360 and PS3. I really appreciate it. Of course. Sometimes this wedding thing stresses me out. Being an open world game, Sleeping Dogs follows similar open world games and United Front games have managed to deliver a fresh and exciting location and gameplay. The Hong Kong island itself is huge and will take players around 10 to 20 minutes to travel across the whole map and this also means there's a lot to do. After the first few hours, side missions will open up including cop fighting, karaoke and street races. Whilst driving across the region in various different bikes and cars, you will instantly notice that each car drives, sounds and feels different. The faster cars have much trickier handling, but of course are much quicker in those situations where you may need to avoid cops or chase after an enemy or a suspect. The bikes in the game are reflected in the same way, with some bikes being slow but looking fantastic nonetheless, whilst other bikes are much faster or also look pretty decent. The driving itself at first was better than what I was expecting, but I wasn't shocked since some of the designers and programmers came from Black Box Studios which are famously known for the Need for Speed titles. As I progressed and drove around, a lot of the cars started to seem less sturdy than before and it felt too easy and a bit arcadey. However, the vehicle damage is superb and follows the realistic approach to an open world environment United Fire Games has provided. The gameplay, even though 90% of the time is spot on, can cause some odd moments where the game will bug out and start doing weird things. Some of the common ones that occur in my playthrough were enemies getting stuck in walls, the sounds of guns firing and cars getting stuck in between obstacles that are not visible. There could also be screen tearing issues and some minor frame rate issues which overall luckily don't accumulate enough to ruin the overall enjoyment of the game. Throughout your time in Hong Kong combat will be frequent and whilst the majority of the game focuses on hand to hand combat some missions do include weapons and guns can be found in boxes and on police throughout the game. The shooting in the game is fairly good but isn't frequent enough. This said the hand to hand combat is brutal and rewarding. With new moves being unlocked that vary between police, trial and martial arts combat skills are rewarded if you manage to level up your police meter, tribe meter or find a hidden statue to bring back to your martial arts teacher. 
There's a lot of variety in the combat which feels fresh and fluid. Sadly though, most of the enemies will require counter approaches to the combat, which is actually where the game's combat fails. The countering doesn't feel as fluid or as smooth as I would have hoped, and can be a little bit predictable with income and enemies glowing red before attacking. Free running and running off walls and kicking an enemy in the face though is still fast and satisfyingly rewarding, borderline in an Assassin's Creed feel to the game. There's a lot to do in Hong Kong, but one of the main things to do is missions that vary from police, triad and face missions. The more missions you do, Shen will level up and earn XP respectively, giving you the overall ranking at the end of the mission in the form of a triangles and an XP bar. Learn Up Your Face offers a lot of perks and unlockables, including new clothes and cars that can only be purchased at certain face levels. These missions are fairly varied, with many of them focused on taking out enemies on the run, car chases and shooting, and catching jug busts, which are spread out throughout the game and are able to be played after completion of the game as well. After the first few hours of the game, during various missions, you also learn how to hijack moving vehicles. This was personally one of my favourite things to do whilst driving around Hong Kong. As soon as I saw a faster and sexier looking car, I just had to jump out of my car and take it for myself. Taking influence from the Just Cause franchise, United Front Games have been able to develop a hijacking system that feels innovative and unique. United Front Games have done a fantastic job with this feature. After beating numerous gangs and civilians, you may also notice that the game has a lot of customization. The main customization included the ability to purchase and unlock new clothes. The more you explore, you come across hidden boxes that reward you with new items for ways to try out. There are 179 different clothing options available, with cars and bike colors also customizable. There is a lot to do to make Way look dapper. Other than the single player, there is no multiplayer functionality included and we are unsure if any of the upcoming DLC will include multiplayer features. Personally, it would have been great to see some missions or races including multiplayer functionality. Throughout the single player campaign, you'll be able to set leaderboard records amongst your friends that offer a lot of different various ways to set the score. There are clean drive times to perform distance wheeling and high speed distances are brave. This is simply something that is picked up if you manage to drive for as long as possible before smashing or braking. There's also long jump leaderboards as well. The lack of multiplayer doesn't ruin the game, in fact it's far from it. It would have been nice however just to see some multiplayer functionality in the future. Sleeman Dogs is a step in the right direction for open world games. United Front Games has delivered a fresh choice of location with beautiful visuals and an indulging story. Sleeman Dogs combat is also enjoyable at times with shooting added to mix things up. With Square Enix already announcing that Sleeman Dogs will, will have loads of upcoming DLC in the next few months, on top of what already is included in the game, that's a lot to offer for players in the long run. Even though the game has much to give, some of the missions are much more interesting than others. The game feels a tad too easy overall, which may not be challenging enough for some gamers. Though the game would have been almost perfect if the random glitches and bugs didn't occur, this game is still a must have for any fans that have played GTA 4 and still waiting for the fifth instalment. We score it 9 out of 10. For the in depth review, head over to pushdashdark.co.uk. Thanks for watching.